Hermes draw near, and to my prayer incline, in arts gymnastic, and in fraud divine. Dire weapon of the tongue which men revere, be present, Hermes, in thy suppliant here. Welcome to Third Eye Bind, episode 26, The Third Eye Line. Ready? Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, I'm Laura. And I'm Caitlin. And welcome to Third Eye Binds. Welcome. (laughs) Welcome, Ben Avenue. Welcome. Cabaret. What are we talking about? Oh, in this episode. We are going to do some Third Eye Line questions. Yes. So this is an all, in all questions episode. It is part two of Third Eye Line. And if you would like to leave a question, you can check us out on Instagram and you'll see in the highlights, there's a little Third Eye Bind, a Third Eye Line phone 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 thing. And you can just, you can DM us. You can leave it in the little question box um, because we love answering your questions, which is why we're devoting an entire episode to it. Yeah, there's a lot of questions. We want to catch up. Yes, we've Catch gotten up. a lot of questions lately, so mm-hmm. this is going to be fun. Let me grab... Oh, before we even shuffle... Oh, yeah. If you like us and you'd like to support us, you can share, subscribe, like, rate us. It actually does help. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also support us on Patreon, thirdeyebind.com slash Patreon? No, Patreon.com Patreon. slash thirdeyebind. Third <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... Mm-hmm. Please do. Anything, anything helps, even yes. a dollar. Helps keeps the literal helps keep the little wow I can't talk the literal lights on little oh no that blah, one blah, was blah. hard <laughs> anyway lights shall we pull a card <laughs> so how do we how what did we do last time with the cards and the and the question thing did we say oh this is just beats me <laughs> we're just gonna pull a card and see what what happens like what are we Ooh. asking <laughs> do I cut the deck no okay. Give us guidance cards. <laughs> oh, okay. We've already pulled this card Have this we? season. I pulled the full reverse today. Oh. And I kind of like this because the full goes into things without knowing. Yeah. And today is an opportunity for us to offer some of the knowing that we do have yeah. to our community. Love that. So that's perfect. The full is great. Mm-hmm. That's so great. The fool is a seeker. Mm-hmm. And when we ask questions, like we are seekers too. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of cool. Um, Sweet. We have so many questions and they are sprawled between all of my Apple devices. Uh, so let's I'll start with the ones on my phone because I accidentally. Like the phone, the laptop. I closed the, the window with all the with ones all on my stuff. computer. That's ah! fine. All right. There's a ton. Wow. Wow. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your questions. Really. Oh, my gosh. There's so many. Okay. Um, Oh. Do you have any books or other resources you recommend for newly practicing witches? Yeah. Um, Actually, I really like Witchery and Plant Plant witchery by Juliet Diaz and even though Juliet Diaz is a Cuban spiritual practitioner like the information why, why do I sound extra like Los Angelino today it's just like 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 let's just like <laughs> let it happen I just have to let her sorry everyone um, listening to this because it's fine you're used to it I can't help myself um the information and the way it is provided in these books is super accessible to anyone with an interest in witchcraft and like witchy spirituality. So I like both of those books for beginners a lot, a lot. I also really love An Encyclopedia of Spirits by Judica Ilays. Um, It's this really dense book with lots of small, it's, I mean, the kids won't know what an encyclopedia is, but the millennials, might remember Mm -hmm. (laughs) but they're not you know big long stories about each and every spirit they're short and it provides 
the region, their origin, their culture, and like a That's little bit great. of backstory. Sometimes it'll incorporate like elemental associations if it makes sense for I that spirit. That. Truly, it tells you like countries if it makes sense for that spirit. And it's a good place to like get started when you feel like certain spirits are calling out to you. I love that. Um, I love that. She makes a few different ones. There's one of spirits, one of saints even, and folk spirit. So I I love all of those books for practitioners. I also love um, by Chiron Armand. It's called, oh my God, it's a cleansing book by, he might have published it under Kai Armand, um, but that's a great introduction to cleansing and clearing your home and yourself and your space. Mm. Yes, we love a Juliet Diaz here. And uh, also her book, The Altar Within, the newest one is... I haven't read that one yet. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. Also, like, if this airs while the fundraiser is still going... Yes. You can support Spirit Bound Press. Yes. Spirit Bound Press is mm-hmm. Juliet's imprint, and they focus on diversifying and amplifying the publishing world mm-hmm. with uh, POC voices and... Uh, putting that at the forefront. Yeah. And it's very important because as we talked about before, a lot of things are whitewashed. Mm-hmm. All, a lot of witchcraft authors are white people mm-hmm. and there's implicit bias in that. So Juliet's books are not only helpful to people of color, but they're also helpful to white people to uh, learn how to like decenter yourself in the narrative and just just learn from someone who's a little, mm-hmm. maybe a little different from you. Mm-hmm. So if uh, you can follow Spirit Bound Press on Instagram to get more info on their fundraiser, which I think will still be going on. I it's think the it month will. of February, yeah. I believe. So it's a whole ass thing and they just launched and it's really... It's exciting. Yeah, and follow Juliet. I am Juliet Diaz on Instagram. Mm-hmm. She's amazing. And um, anything she says, I support. <laughs> blindly <laughs> and with lots of fervor <laughs> honestly but yeah do you have any books that you recommend no just hers <laughs> i'm not a big i'm not a big spell book fan me either but not that not that all books are not all spell books are her books aren't really even spell books. exactly They're, that's why yeah um i'm a fan of like practice I, i'd say you know reach out to people that offer um maybe like courses or classes Mm -hmm. like caitlin or like yeah i i'm more into that than i just think there's a lot of books out there that are so many i'm just bored of them honestly i'm I'm a fan of sort of taking a, a really personal spontaneous approach to like teaching yourself uh how to harness your own energy and i don't i sometimes i think that finding that from an outside source is it kind of taints the taints the pot a little mm. bit so i'm more of I a just but, hiccuped. but yes I, that's why i'm like juliet all the way yeah. yeah i really like juliet's books because they're not spell books no and i don't know they're just a really lovely introduction to like living a magical life yeah in a way that encourages you to do your own thing yeah and i don't know i've read some like witchcraft books in the beginning i'm if you are interested in like magical book reviews, follow my friend Dom on Instagram, Uplift Herbs. There um, you go. Dom posts magical book reviews on YouTube and gives like early access and more like, I don't know. Dom's a little bit more honest with us on Patreon. <laughs> no, that's great. <laughs> you know, he tries to be respectful on YouTube, but Dom does some really wonderful book reviews of magical books so. that's a great place to mm-hmm. start um but let's honestly see. no i hate most of them it's 222 make a wish oh that's magical weird. okay um <laughs> what are oral de- <laughs> what <laughs> finish that sentence what is oral exquisite <laughs> Oh, uh, this is the wrong podcast for that. I'm a 12 year old boy. Um, <laughs> what are oracle decks used for? <laughs> and do either of you use them? <laughs> Funny you mentioned that. <laughs> All I've been doing is designing an oracle deck. And you know, I'm me too. myself the same fucking question. <laughs> we are both designing oracle decks we right are. now. 
I think the answer is what for whatever the fuck you want to use it for. Pretty much. Why don't you talk about the difference between so, the two? The difference between tarot and oracle. Tarot I'm is an organized system. Tarot is an organized system of 78 cards. The major arcana and the minor arcana. 21 major arcana or 22 major arcana cards, 56 minor arcana cards, and the minor arcana is then divided into four different suits of wands, cups, Pentacles. Pentacles and swords. <laughs> and they are numbered from one to ten. And then you have your four court cards. And like that is just the standard. And different authors and illustrators might have some fun reimaginings and reinterpretations of it. Like music. Like music. But for the most part, the <laughs> system itself stays the same. Oracle decks are cards that can have any number of cards in the deck. They can have any theme. Any theme. Um, they can literally be any. The limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. It does really not fun. exist. And that's what's kind of fun about Oracle cards, that you can find a deck for fucking anything. And you can use Oracle cards for divination if you feel called to. You can use Oracle decks for, I think they're really good for like writing prompts, reflection, Mm -hmm. journaling prompts. I think Oracle cards are also nice to incorporate into your tarot practice. Like maybe you pull a few tarot cards, a spread for yourself, and they need to like soften (laughs) whatever message is coming through the tarot. So you pull yeah. an oracle card and put that on top. They're sort of less harsh and rigid. Yeah. Because like you said, the tarot are bound and set, which is cool. Mm-hmm. But like designing an oracle deck's fun and like working with one is fun because there's there's free there's a real freedom mm-hmm. there. Like I'm working on the booklet for my deck currently and that's my last thing and I'm done. So but it's like coming up with the meanings of the cards and like channeling them Mm -hmm. and like it's really fun making an oracle deck has been really really fun it's really it's really fun there's some really beautiful ones out there too Mm -hmm. there really are some great oracle decks i really love passages oracle by liliana perez um amazing you can find it at ihakekura.com um i really love all the spirit speak oracle decks those are fucking cool Mm -hmm. there's just there's so many. There's so many, and there's so many. They're very cool. Yeah. Tools. In and a anyone can way. make an Oracle deck, which yeah. is also cool. Yeah. Just like anyone can make a tarot deck, too. But yeah. I'm just saying there's a lot of freedom of creativity in mm. that. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. What else? Hi, I love the show. I should be telling everyone who sent these questions. So Queen of Leaves asked us about the Oracle oh, deck. Queen of Leaves. Um, and then Emma says, what are some ways I can include some magic in my cooking? Oh. That's a good question. Yes. I sort of treat the cooking process as a ritual in my head. Mm-hmm. Like I really get into this groove of like not quite knowing what because it's me. So you all know by now I like to be spontaneous in in improv and like I don't know what's gonna happen. It keeps it exciting and spicy for me. <laughs> so I sort of like to not know what I'm gonna put in something and just sort of vibe with it, and it always comes out good. Yeah. So I'd say uh, adding that element of not going by the recipe. Unless it's like really hard and you need to. Not like for with, baking. <laughs> not, for, not for everything, but like if you're creating like a spice blend or like things like that, I like to really just kind of go off the wall and like really get creative with what I'm and listen to like your instincts and mm-hmm. like that's magic. That's that's vibing in the kitchen, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, there's other, other things like like activating your ingredients and mm. like really being intentional about what you're putting in or yeah, the opposite, being very intentional about what you're putting in and and cooking with like ingredients that, it depends on what you're making, but cooking with ingredients that are like close to you and important to you mm-hmm. and like in your arsenal. Mm. And now what do you think? Yeah, like ingredients that you've built relationship with. Absolutely. Yeah. Or build relationship mm-hmm. with different things and grow a garden. and Yeah. You know, 
I find that the spirits are very active in the kitchen and they very much like to be invited to be a part of the process. And they'll usually like speak to me and instruct me to like use certain things. Mm -hmm. Add this to this, add this to this. Um, I think that, you know, praying over your food, um, pouring your love or your intentions. It might not be love. Maybe you're serving yeah. something spicy. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> whatever is happening. It is you're trying to call in and conjure into this food. Speaking that intention into the ingredients is really helpful. Um, but when you're cooking for yourself or for your loved ones, like pouring affirmations of tenderness, of compassion, of care, of nourishment, of love, mm. of appreciation, speaking those words over the food as you're making it, or at least keeping them in your mind as you're making it, like that's that then becomes the energy we consume when the meal is ready. And I yeah. think that's like we fucking beautiful. You can it's, taste that kind. Yes. I can taste that kind of thing. It's like when your grandma makes you cookies. Or your mom makes like a grilled cheesy. Yeah. Like, and it's never the same. Yes, exactly. And I always ask my mom to make me like a grilled cheese. Mm -hmm. And it's just like so consistently delicious. Yes. It's the love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also adorning your kitchen like you would a magical space. Yes. Your kitchen is an altar too. Your stove is like mm -hmm. a cauldron. You can use actual cauldrons. You mm -hmm. can... Like the I hearth. just put like dried herbs that I were calling to me like above my. There's ways that you know to just zhuzh it up. Mm -hmm. Get like yeah, just different things that it's just fun. Absolutely. Organize your spices. You know, like yeah, clean your kitchen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. If you're into that sort of thing. Yeah, I have a keep it clean. I have a client who has some like Russian ancestry and this spirit was coming through in one of her sessions and it's this like crone like spirit who's really into the kitchen, really into the kitchen. And I did some research and I discovered, oh my gosh, I, I can't I'm so annoyed that I don't remember the exact name of the type of spirit, but it's the specific type of crone who like cleans the kitchen for you and like throws your shit around in other spaces if you don't clean the kitchen yourself. Yeah. She's like, I'll do it. Yeah. But I'm going to annoy you <laughs> until great. you clean it. <laughs> it's important. And when it is clean, then she's like a protector, like a ward. I love that. Mm -hmm. it keeps you in check. Exactly. I love that. Isn't that cute? Mm hmm Okay. Uh, Mercurial Meg wants to know, what are the best ways to feel connected to your practice, especially when you work a nine to five? I love that question. So I officially transitioned out of full-time work in 2018, but I was still, like, I never stopped being magical. Um, so the things that were really important for me was, like, incorporating stuff into my workspace, if that's something that you're able yeah. to do. Like, I sat at a desk, so I had a few crystals that I would keep in my pocket, some that I would keep on the desk. I would keep a tarot card taped to the little area behind my computer. Um, making time to go outside. Oh, yeah, if you work a nine-to-five, if you are able yeah. to eat lunch outside, pretend you're a smoker if you aren't, and start taking smoke breaks. Yes. And go outside and get some sunshine because the sun revitalizes you and it will help you keep your like sanity and peace of heart and peace of mind as you're working your nine yeah, to five. hundred percent agree with everything you said. I pictured crystals sun. at my desk mm -hmm. and I, cause I used to work a nine to five, but I was not near a window. So I would I would go outside and take walks and lunch mm -hmm. breaks. I would go I'd do exactly what you said. And like if you can have plants mm -hmm. like and or something, crystals are very like, you know, no one's like freaked out by crystals anymore. So I had like a smoky quartz at my desk to yeah. like keep that energy or the Me energy too. of the technology. Yeah, yeah I had a smoky yeah. quartz and I had a hematite. The smoky quartz Those was for great. the tech and the hematite was for Grounding my and boss. Like, yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. Anything kind of dark in tone will mm -hmm. will help um, repel bullshit. <laughs> so And like use put a cactus at your workstation. Put a cactus. <laughs> I tell a lot of people to put a cactus at their workstation yeah. for just, you know. Yeah. Protection from psychic vampirism. Or a low light friendly plant like a ZZ. Exactly. If Something you don't that draws have... in light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or just life mm -hmm. or something. Life, yes. Drink lots of water when you're at work. Yeah. If they provide a water dispenser, drink water all day long. Yeah. And uh, our soda machine, get sodas, all, eat all yeah. the snacks. 
do all the things, mm-hmm. <laughs> use all the cream cheese like I did. Use all of it. <laughs> Order the good snacks if you're the person that was ordering the snacks. Yes. I was a front desk worker, so. But um, staying yeah. hydrated is is a spiritual practice. Mm-hmm. Um, making sure that you eat, you know, if you have access to food, whether you're bringing it or you're ordering it, making sure you actually take time to eat your lunch and not just work through it is a spiritual practice. It is tending to the altar that is your body. Um, I I worked for so many people who glorified not eating Ugh. because it was a measure of their commitment to their work. Yeah. And I was always made to feel bad for actually eating food. Yeah. Like, fuck that. Like, that is a spiritual practice, taking care of your body, eating and drinking water. Um, mm-hmm. Say a little prayer for yourself on the way to work. <laughs> Or have an in-car ritual mm-hmm. yes, of some sort. I used to ground in my car. Before you get out. And then I would do the selenite wand, and then I would go inside. Yeah, and then when you're done, do the same thing. Exactly. Even if it's just like a two-minute thing. like mm-hmm. it, It's so rough. But yeah. even if you're on a job that, this is kind of out there, but even if you're on a job where you can't carry like Amazon or where you're just right. constantly moving, you don't have a desk, you don't have anything, you can carry crystals like you said in your pocket Mm -hmm. or not even crystals you can get a tattoo totally like a like a protective like a protective tattoo if you're into that or you can put herbs in your pocket get a ceremonial charge tattoo where it's Mm -hmm. like this is for that purpose so when i'm yeah so you always have something on you that ties your jewelry talismans are that's what they're for Mm -hmm. you know like um and then yeah i i like that having a talisman and then like recharging the talisman and like that's your yes. work talisman or that's like your daily like thing that you mm-hmm. that you like adorn yourself with because that's why you some I mean some of us some of us do some of us don't like adorn yourself with something when you do a ritual at home right mm-hmm. or you wear white or mm-hmm. some, certain things right like maybe you could wear certain colors like yeah. glamour yeah. Oh, yeah. Like getting ready for work. And maybe you don't have time, but you do do makeup, right? Or you do take a shower. Yeah. So like implement stuff that's really practical in yes. the shit you already do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the greatest advice I yeah. can give anyone is yeah. like, what are you already doing every day? Yeah. How can you attach a magical element Even to your that? wands, your hands, yes. your fingers, your... Your talons. Are, your, get your nails done and like put some like magical sigilly shit mm-hmm. on there. Like just... I did so it's evil always eye there. on mine this time. I did a heart crystal. Nothing and if to do you're with on anything. Patreon, you can see pictures of our nails yeah. every time we get them done. So <laughs> if you can treat yourself to that, then that's something that's on you all the time. And mm-hmm. that is an extension of your glamorous magic. I used self. to keep my tarot deck on me all of the time, too. So I would yeah. like walk. We I worked downtown in the fashion district. So I would walk to fit because there's a big park in front of it. And I would sit there and eat my lunch and like pull tarot cards for myself. That's and the then Fashion walk Institute of Design and Merchandising. In it case sure you didn't know. Is. I'm a dropout. <laughs> of Where'd that you go? School. Yeah. I am also a college dropout, a proud college dropout. <laughs> I dropped out of Cal Poly Pomona, and then I dropped out of FITM. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> you can do it too, folks. And you can do it too. <laughs> <laughs> Drop out of college and become a professional witch. <laughs> Save money on that Or that's loan. also an option. If you are like, I want to be a magical, magical practitioner, and I mm-hmm. want to make this my passion and figure out a way to do that and we will have an episode coming up called yeah. the business of witchcraft we will so we yeah will, we will talk about it oh i'm so excited for that episode ah uh, i'm so excited there's a lot there's a lot okay cat scratch i love cat scratch cat wants scratch to know fever. do certain mm-hmm. drugs open up one's third eye this is an interesting question so uh, well go. like yes <laughs> yes yes um, lots of different substances, drugs, medicines, medicines can open up one's third eye. I think what's essential when we engage with these types of things, and again, this is just my opinion, um, is that we are working with them. I don't know. I feel like because plant medicine and psychedelic medicine and can it's so big right and it's kind of like it makes you really open and all of the boundaries are kind of blurred Mm. so i think it's important to ground using those within some sort of structure 
whether it's under the advisement of an elder yes. or within the guidance of a spiritual discipline. I think that helps keep us grounded while we are engaging with these things. Also, like certain plant medicines are are traditionally only meant to be used within the context of um, a cultural spiritual practice. Yes. So like, yes, they can. I think like cannabis is a really accessible um plant medicine for, i mean i live in california so that's why it's a really accessible i grew plant pot medicine. on my balcony in culver city um <laughs> so like that's the type of if that's something you have access to but again like create some boundaries for yourself if you are engaging with this on your own create some boundaries for yourself whether it's I'm doing it within ceremony i'm saying these opening words and these closing words um and as always, like when it comes to to substances, substances, medicines of these types, like just exercise some discernment, some I, like moderation is key. Well, they can get out of hand. Moderation is key, my friend. Even plant medicine exactly. can be addictive. Yeah, I know. Or it can like open you up to too wide and you can't come back. Um, There's a lot of air and a lot of like that exactly. and you need to stay grounded and absolutely yeah. what you said like doing a you if you're work you need if you're going to take like plant medicine from like you know the amazon or some shit like you need to go there and like support and pay the elders that are trained in that fucking medicine yes and not go to some like whitewashed fucking shaman in yes. the desert or some shit exactly. like don't do that that's just not smart mm -hmm. and dangerous because you don't know if they even know what know they're fucking what the doing fuck they're talking about exactly so um yeah just just yeah i myself have not i've only done pot and i was like addicted to it mm -hmm. and i've never done like um other substances because i just don't i don't feel like i need it yeah and that's okay you don't that's need totally these okay. things you don't need to open it. up but you can but just yeah be really careful and i was gonna say too it's not just sometimes yes this i think this question is in the context of like plant-based mm -hmm. like uh what the hell is psycho psychedelics that's yeah. the word i'm looking for but also i think that there are some prescribed substances that like I have anxiety mm -hmm. disorder, like panic disorder. So I take, I do take Lexapro, mm -hmm. a little dosy dose, and that helps me ground so I can then be a better witch and a better practitioner. Mm -hmm. So I think I that, that Western medicine can mm -hmm. be valuable. And also mm -hmm. that's causing me to open up my third eye because it's causing me to not have- You're not distressed. Brain chemistry is not fucked up and- mm -hmm. I just wanted to point that I out. I love that. No, I think that was really, really important. So thank you for saying that. To not have shame. I think with there's that. a lot. I've I've personally seen it like on the internets, um, a lot of misinformation about not being able to connect to your third eye if you are taking any sort of prescription, yeah. specifically like mood stuff. Or birth control. Yeah. And it's like which has come up lately. Can birth we just control can we just let people like care for their mental health if they actually are able to have access to the medications that yeah. actually help them? Like just let them be. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. There's, there's a lot there's of, that, a lot on of the that There's a lot of birth control shaming going on yeah. right now, and I'm not about it. Yeah. Saying you're not a real woman, or you're you're not a, having a real feminine experience if you don't if you take birth control. Yeah. Fuck off, because the feminine experience is even more than gender. So yeah. That first too, of all. First of all. <laughs> first of all. First of all that, <laughs> but second of all, that's fucking stupid. Right. It's not like they're giving out abortions all over the place because in this again, country. Like, so yeah. you better take your pill, yeah. otherwise you're fucked. <laughs> Especially if you're in Texas or Arkansas yeah. or Indiana. It's just not a good feeling. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Don't. I've been on birth control since I was 15 yeah. years old, and, and it like, helps me with like. Whatever endo PCOS is yeah, is dormant the under there yeah. because I've taken it for so long. Mm -hmm. Like it, and then if 
you're suffering, how can you do good for others? And how can you like just live your life? Truly. This helps people. Not everyone yeah. are the same. Sorry, that was just came up no, recently. It pissed me the fuck I've off. I've been saying it too. And they it's go, very granola, goopy. It's very crunchy. It's very like crunchy and sh- shaman and like. Yeah. In a, it's like the new age Christianity repackaged. It's well, that's very like crystal bracelet. Like they wanted to make it about like beaded. all of the different side effects. Like, all the different side effects. Yeah. And it's like, look, every Western medicine has side effects. Like, turn on cable and you'll hear 50 million side effects at the you end know, of... Anal fissures. And it's literally at the end of any medication commercial. There's going to be side effects. And as an informed consumer, you can decide whether or not the side effects outweigh the benefits as an individual, for sure. Um, but underneath that, what I see is this very insidious, like, return to trad wife propaganda. Yes. Don't take birth control. Just keep having babies. Do what's natural. Right. It's almost like God's plan kind of verbiage. That's the vibe. And it's like, what the fuck? And it's this weird, like cycle pipeline weird thing to where i'm like what the fuck where is this it's actually this, taking me this like call to being pure and natural and magical like you're only a witch if you don't take birth control bullshit is like this weird purity ring shit like it, it goes, is it it's is It's this weird like and it's just not it's just not true I was telling Laura the other day, like, like if, I were, if I were to try to do like, and I think it's cool. I think that people with uteruses who are able to do like the fertility tracking and yeah, pay absolutely. attention to their temperature and yeah. track it on the yeah, couch. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. You're amazing. Yeah. That's your magic. I cannot remember mm. to brush my teeth some days. How the fuck would yeah. I remember to do all of the things it's like this neurobinary like like expectation it's like, like i can't like to track every day like yeah i don't a, know when yeah. my last period was yeah. i i'm sure it happened yeah. <laughs> yeah like i'm i'm real good at taking a birth control pill every day one step that's i'm just i've done it forever yeah and I like who I am and I don't have, I feel great. Yeah. Like I don't, and, I, and that's fine. Not everyone can tolerate Not, that, but don't right. shame other but don't people. Shame, it's weird. Just let it's people do weird. what they need to do to it's not weird. get pregnant. <laughs> don't, Christ. let's just not like be like, you're only a real woman if blah. Exactly. Or anything. Yes. that gets that, a little on the board. You know what I'm saying? That's it. It's the same kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't need your validation mm-hmm. to whatever just, or to track my fertility i don't cycles. need a yeah, meme about it how fucking bad birth control is i don't it actually is great for a lot of people yeah. so fuck you yeah good question that's a good question also oh you know what i was thinking about is that um like alcohol when Ooh. used within the context of a spiritual discipline can also be a really good way to connect with spirits. Yeah. Um, I come from a tradition where like we, we leave alcohol from our spirits. Sometimes we imbibe alcohol as our spirits. Yeah. Like they drink through us. But I will say like drinking in a bar, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but it can open you up. Yeah, because so, like there are certain spirits who linger mm-hmm. in bars and dark places, and like the alcohol is called spirits for yeah. a reason, yeah. and so it definitely has the ability to open you up. And if you don't have spiritual disciplines, like it, just like any other mm. substance or mm. medicine, can open you up more than you desire to be. That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. And then maybe that's part of where the addiction stems from. Literally, maybe. Yeah. Other reasons too, but that's yeah. very interesting. Mm-hmm. And then you find yourself out of control before you even know it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a very good, that's question. A good question. I needed to get that out. Thank you. That was a good question. That's so funny. We were just talking about that. It's a very that. relevant question. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mari wants to know Can you connect with ancestors of the lineage your parent is adopted into? Even though it's not blood lineage. Your parent is adopted. Oh. So I'm going to speak from the perspective of Espiritismo. 
And in that practice, like, yes, you can reach out to the adopted lineage, like the adopted lineage. So like the lineage of the people who adopted you. Was adopted by like Chinese people. So that's that's I'm trying to just understand right, the like question. Like if your white mom example. was adopted by Chinese yeah, people yeah. and your white mom wanted to connect with her okay. Chinese family's Got ancestors. It. In theory, yes, but they are not your ancestors. No. Not according to the tradition that I'm from. There are still spirits that you can honor as your family yeah. um, that you can pay tribute to, that you can connect with. But from the tradition I'm from, ancestors are only your blood relatives. That doesn't mean you can't talk to the other spirits. It doesn't mean, you know, family members that married into your family aren't going to show up because they usually do. Like people who want to reach out to you are going to reach out to you. But in the tradition I'm from, like ancestors are considered to be only your blood relatives. And Hmm. if you don't know who your ancestors are, I promise they know who you are. Yeah. I promise they know how to find you. All you need to do is set up that space and set the intention that you desire to connect with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's very interesting. And I do think that even if maybe there's some sort of like uh, separation or uh, bad blood, no pun intended, between (laughs) you and like your actual like like a parent Mm -hmm. or like a parent's lineage, like... If my if my my dad's German, if I was like fuck my dad, I don't want anything to do with that German ancestry. Like, mm-hmm. it can be hard to want to like mm-hmm. reach out, but I think it's important to like understand that your ancestors go back like way the fuck before yeah. what a traumatic family member maybe did, mm-hmm. and to like you said, and I think another episode we were talking about like to you can reach out to like those those who like you're meant to be with and we'll we'll come to you and those you can say like i don't want you shitty shitty folks coming in like when you're allowed to say that you know you speak out call it to my ancestors wise and well yeah and even if i see jokes about it on tiktok all the time like um mixed you know spanish and native um yeah folks in the latin a community are like oh, yeah. i don't want to call upon my spanish ancestors and it's like well not all of your spanish yeah. ancestors are shitty no. like some of them were probably Celts. some of them were mm-hmm. from catalan like there are a lot of like there were a lot of really cool like yeah. feminist communist movements anti-fascist movements in spain um yeah so not all of your ancestors are shitty and it's good to connect with the ones who are well and to like learn something about yourself through that process. Mm. And I also think it helps a lot with like mm, shame, like Mm. releasing some shame, Mm -hmm. having a little bit more excitement about who you come from. And that takes us away from appropriating the cultures of others when we're yes. excited about our own. Yes. So I like that question. That was a, yeah, I don't know that I have all the answers to that question, but that's mm-hmm. that's a complicated question. Yeah. A very and, good question. And like my answer, like I said, it comes from the tradition I'm from, but yeah. you might yeah. talk to a different type of practitioner who mm-hmm. tells you something different and like, cool. You yeah, know, just... and I just don't really have an answer. But yeah, I like, <laughs> I like yours. Yeah. Um, <laughs> another question from Mari. How do you create a spell for your desired future when your spouse or partner doesn't hold the same vision, i.e. doesn't trust in the magic of possibility? That doesn't hold in the same... I think like... The... Like they're just not magical? I think that's what it is. The partner's oh, not magical. You can still do it. Mike's think... like Mike's face right now. You can still look. I've been Mike's actually judging. Mike is. I judging. would love it if Mike. I would love it if Mike had in like an altar space and like a little. I would love it if you did that. I'm talking to you right now. I think that'd be really cute. I wish we could pan the camera. To Mike. His face is like. I don't. I don't think it's. I don't. I don't think that it's impossible to just keep manifesting or dreaming Mm -hmm. or like doing magic for your stop laughing your (laughs) non-magical partner if they're like 
I don't want to do the same thing as you, literally, then that's like a relationship issue. Right. If your vision of the future <laughs> yeah. together Doesn't is not match. the same, don't force it. Don't force magic on it because it's just going to like yeah. backfire on you. But you I know? do it all the time. But if you both have the same desire for the future together and uh, your partner just happens to not be magical about it, that's okay. Just that's do your totally thing. totally fine. As long as they're like consenting, I guess. Yeah. You know, as long as it's cool with them. Like, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong mm-hmm. with wishing blessings upon yourself mm-hmm. and your loved ones no. and you know what? i kind of equate it to like if people from two different religions got married yeah. and like you're each doing your own thing mm-hmm. and keeping your own belief systems like that's cool um it is cool you could even like research no the other person's like lineage and get some little tidbits mm-hmm. and be like oh this is fun like you want to do this or not? That's fine. I've been listening to like some Welsh folk tales with the kids to help connect them to their yeah or ancestry if you have kids, on their yeah, dad's that's side. Cool. Yeah, because I'm like Ugh, You're the like, British. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of fairies. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's all fairies and witches, and but it's fun. It's fun. But yeah, I know, so I know. I think it's okay to like cast blessings, and also like if it bothers you, if that's the real question. What do I do about it bothering me? Yeah. Like, you need to talk to your partner about it. Yeah, if they're like shitting on it. If all they're the not time. respecting your practice, it's one thing to not believe in it, but it's another thing to be disrespectful. And if that's what you're experiencing, like, you deserve respect in your spiritual practice. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important, like, if you are able to, like, have a conversation with your partner about it and say, like, yeah. it makes me feel this way when I talk about these things that are important to me. That's what I call a personal problem. Yeah. <laughs> that I have no, I, I have no stock in that. I'm not a therapist, Neither, but I like we only, are not therapists trained. Yeah, license, we're not therapists. But, but magically, you know, you and, can you can still bl- I wish blessings upon them. Yes. Yeah. And it's okay. There's no magical backlash that's going to happen. No, there's nothing wrong with wishing blessings Uh -uh. upon yourself and your partner, even if they don't believe in it. Did you ever date anyone and tell them you were a witch? Uh, yeah. Um, but I was high most of the time. We were both high most of the time. So I don't think, I don't think it really had much of an effect, to be honest. (laughs) That's funny. No one ever really cared. No. Yeah. No one was like, no, I didn't ever date religious people. Yeah. yeah, most of the people I dated had like pretty strong cultural backgrounds, mm-hmm. i.e., they weren't white. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I only yeah. dated like Latin A guys until. Yeah, like, like uh, Mexican and Asian. Yeah. They're like, oh, bruja. That is my type. They were like, pull cards for me. <laughs> I have a type. <laughs> um, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> This <laughs> coffee talk. Yes. Uh, this question comes from Samantha. Samantha. Developing psychic abilities, Claire's. What has helped you in this process? What do you advise for beginners? That's a you question. So, my best, my best advice, if you're trying to develop your Claire's, is to start engaging with things that exercise your imagination. Whether it is a coloring book and a pack of Crayolas, um, mm. a sketchbook, maybe it's knitting, maybe it's painting, maybe it's reading, um, maybe it's stargazing, maybe it's staring at the clouds. But what interests your imagination? What gives you, what exercises the muscle that mm. is your imagination? Because at the end of the day, like your Claire's, your clairvoyance, your claircognizance are directly related, in my opinion, to your ability to trust your imagination. Mm -hmm. Um, Something that my clients will often say is like, I don't know if I'm imagining this or if I'm like envisioning it, if I'm seeing it with my Claire's. I'm like, well, there's not really Mm. a difference. Your imagination's like the vehicle that takes you to the messages. And so the more that you start engaging with these things, Um, the stronger your Claire's become. Mm. And I think that sometimes as adults, we're like, well, I don't know what to do. Like what's creative for me, especially if you don't come from, if if you're not engaging with creativity on a regular basis, Mm -hmm. like Laura's a creatrix by craft. I'm a crayon person. Exactly. I'm just 
That's interesting. So, you know, if you don't know what to start with, what did little you enjoy playing with? Yeah. Was it Play-Doh? Hobbies. Was it paper mache? Was it Barbies? Thrifting. Like, whatever you enjoyed doing for imaginative play as a Collages. child. Collage. If you're our age, you did mm-hmm. that shit. Like, magazine take some cutouts. time. Yes, magazine cutouts. Pinterest boards. Mm-hmm. Pinterest boards. Um, you can do collages on Canva, but take some time to engage in imaginative play. And Side that note. is going to strengthen. Did your you know that you can fire hands. pottery in the fucking microwave? What? <laughs> X squeeze. That's cool. Yeah. A little Google home that. kiln. A little home kiln. So if you want, always wanted to do pottery, yeah. like, moi. Melty beads. Do you guys Small. remember melty beads? The ones melty? you, like, put your iron on top of oh, them when yes. you were done. That's creative play. Yeah. Um, Barbies. The plastic pony beads. Mm. All of that shit. It doesn't have to be. Make slime. It doesn't have to be, like. It doesn't profound. Have to be like profound. It just if it tickles your fancy, if little you was into it, instruments. Play with that, yeah. Instruments, exactly. Yeah. All of these things: singing, cooking, um, cooking. There's so many things. Imaginative play is one of Dance. the greatest ways. Movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like because I'm not. I'm. I'm also like I'd like to get really good at psychometry like that's Mm. my because I already have an inclination towards it and I want to practice it and Mm -hmm. I took like a scrying class at the witch's confluence which is a great place Mm. they don't they didn't do it last year they didn't do it it's very sad but it was cool because we we were paired up and we it was like learning how to trust your visions like Mm -hmm. it's really that's the hard part for me is Mm -hmm. trusting that it's right because they were like okay look into your partner's eyes and like they're gonna they're gonna give you a place in your mind and you're gonna describe it to them and i did and the girl was like that's a place i go like right down by the river Mm -hmm. and i was like oh getting that validation like it's hard it's hard to trust yourself without the validation right it is it's like the yeah it's like the it's like swapping Mm -hmm. because usually we're like we need validation and then we feel good but it's like yeah when i was first offering into the veil as an in-person class i used to pair everybody up yeah and we would do that kind of exercise like they would tell each other about themselves basically i would Mm -hmm. put strangers together and it was so much fucking fun Mm -hmm. it was so much fun i really miss doing that but maybe finding a partner to yeah. develop your psychic gifts with would be great, oh, you that know? would be like your bestie. A game like that I do with the kids partner. is like, they'll say, guess guess what number I'm thinking of. And it's yeah. like silly, but we do that all the time. Yeah. And I enjoy blowing their minds. <laughs> That's great. So those are all those are all some fun ways to start yeah. expanding those gifts. How fun. Let's see. Lopez asked... Oh, this isn't a question. Oh, but this is a message that I thought was cool. One of our listeners was trying to listen to episode 20, but accidentally listened to episode 10. And she said that we pulled the Wheel of Fortune on 10 and 20. We did? And I think the Wheel of Fortune is card 10 of the Major Arcana. Isn't that cool? Wow. Isn't that weird? That's interesting. Magic is real. That card needed that person to hear it, Mm -hmm. (laughs) clearly. Isn't that fascinating? But like for it to be 10 and 20? Yeah, that is weird. That's weird. Uh, Okay, witchy woman. Ooh. Witchy woman. Witchy woman. See how she flies. (laughs) She's got the moon in her eyes. (laughs) witchy woman says hello fellow witches what are some things you guys did in the beginning of your journey to get more connected to the craft in terms of research and strengthening one's intuition it was the 90s i went to the library (laughs) what did i do strengthen i just tried a bunch of shit yeah really experimentation yeah (laughs) <laughs> I watched a lot of witchy pop culture. I watched a lot yeah. of witch movies, witch TV shows. I feel like that yeah, really influenced kid, me early so on. I was a kid, so like I burnt stuff. Mm-hmm. I like played with candles and it got messy with a lot of things. Tried made different lots of spells, potions. did some things I shouldn't have. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you kind of got to do that. 
again creative play yeah this was before the internet or mm-hmm. i only had like wicca books that was really all that was sold at the what time what was her name silver silver ravenwolf silver ravenwolf yeah yeah that was like it there was that nothing was else it. and i definitely definitely read the shit out of that and zodiac stuff honestly Zo- i loved astrology, astrology really Ugh. really was i just liked it and honestly like yeah like rocks and things and things like yeah. i just always really liked connecting to nature connecting to nature really is was important for me that's the best teacher yeah uh but again i was like seven so baby great <sighs> This question is for Laura. What? Wait, what? I guess, no. What? It literally no, says. No, it's not. Hi, this is for Laura. No, I feel so special. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, Go somebody on. get Laura a medal, please. Oh, my God. I love attention. I love attention. <laughs> I'm also part Portuguese <gasps> and have been looking for resources related to witchcraft and traditions in oh, Portugal, oh and I'm really struggling. Oh, no. I was hoping you would be able to share share any leads you have what has worked for you while researching thank you for being so open on the podcast it's really helped me. oh my gosh From hello Baby fellow portuguese <laughs> um okay it's hard we actually <laughs> talked about this in our folklore and fairy tales episode mm-hmm. if you have not listened to that yet go you back should. and listen um do you know the name of that book yeah i actually have it right here so there's, there's it on a few camera. books on on um azori i'm uh, from the azores if you're not there you can probably find some stuff on mainland portugal but um azorian legends as folklore uh this is a book has a ship on it shocker um i would start with like folklore books um there's a few there's another one too that i have i've found like a few <laughs> and um, they're okay. They're, it's hard to piece together. Like we did a whole episode on it, so listen to that. But mm-hmm. you know, it's um, start with books. I even went on Reddit just to because some people ask the same questions. Yeah, and I try and see like there's. I wish someone would make like a podcast. I'm also really into like I'm hearing like learn the language. Like I get that a lot mm-hmm. from my guides. Like learn learn about the country and read some dry ass books. Like there's this one about. The immigrants from the Azores, like, to California, to the United States and California, and I think Massachusetts is the other big location. Mm -hmm. Um, So, like, learn, like, the logistics of why they came, what their life was like. Know that it's a lot of, there's a lot of fishermen, there's a lot of ocean, there's a lot of volcano stuff. So, if that's, uh, learn about the topography, the plants, like, the environment and Mm -hmm. the language, and then kind of just see what happens, really. It's, that's what I, that's where I'm at, truly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, Okay, next question. Hi, I'm Emma, and I love your podcast. Thanks, Emma. Thank you. Um, I have a question that's been perplexing me recently, and I was wondering if there's any words of wisdom one or both of you have to share. I'm currently doing a deep dive in my spirituality and coming into my own as a witch. I'm living in a very small town in Colorado that's pretty far from any kind of civilization. What? Mm, lucky. I feel disconnected from resources like mentor opportunities or possibly a career pursuing my unique skills as a person and which working in tandem. I'm not really sure where to start this process and how to really hone my psychic abilities in ways that help me and help others. Again, thanks for all the work you put into the pod and I hope to hear back. Blessings, Emma. I'm getting like the knowledge is outside already. Yeah, you live part like you live not by anybody. Nature, Fuck. Yeah, yeah, like you have an advantage, and to like figure out how to use that. Mm-hmm. And then, honestly, like there are so many amazing teachers who do online classes now. Like you can find somebody. There's um, Spirit House Collective always has a bunch of different workshops. Um, Asia Dasher is the founder of Spirit House Collective and she hosts classes. She has other people come in. Um, Mary Gricey is a medium who hosts like non-denominational mediumship 101, if that's something you're interested in. Um, 
You do retreats you can... and bring people to your space. Totally. Because <laughs> I want to go. <laughs> Laura's coming to visit. I'm coming over, baby. <laughs> I'm coming back for you, baby. But really, like the, how we excited, uh, how excited mm-hmm. we got when you said, "I yeah. don't live near anyone." Or even, like, you mentioned the Witches Confluence. Yeah. Like, even though they're not hosting classes right now, go to their website and see who all of the past teachers and facilitators have been and look them up on their personal websites because most of these folks host classes on their own anyway. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I mean... I teach a class, it's called Into the Veil, and it's about spiritism and learning how to develop spiritual discipline and developing your mediumship within that context. And that might not be what you're into, that's okay. Um, Ritualcraft.com has a ton of different classes. Like, it's really cool, actually, how many different types of classes they have. Um, Hmm. Who else can I think of? Uh, Golden Dome School. Golden Donut School. Yeah. <laughs> 22 <laughs> teachings. Golden Donut. Donuts sound delicious. I'm just hungry. Um, the Golden Dome School or like 22 teachings. There are lots of different classes through Great. them as well. Like the resources are out there. And if it's a mentorship or a teacher that you seek, like if you have Wi Fi, you can have that. You can have that experience while still living where you live. And I think the most important thing when engaging with teachers is like shop around a little bit, yeah. um, see whose energy feels good when it you talk to them, um, use your discernment, use your discretion. And if any teacher tells you that their way is the only way, mm-hmm. run away. Run the fuck away. Run away. Um, run away outside because I do feel like like where you're gonna get your empowerment from and your like specific skill set is outside I agree. where you are like mm-hmm. i'm getting a very like strong impression that you you're gonna sometimes it's hard to see what you have right in front of you mm. when you're just in it all the time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but from someone who like i live in i live in la you know and i want I want more nature so badly. Like that would be so good for me in my practice. And like, I just crave it so much. Like that's why I got so excited when you said that I'm not near anything. And I'm just like, oh my God, you're so lucky. <laughs> What's because that like? <laughs> I'm not a big, like I'm very, very skeptical about books and teachers and even more so than Caitlin sometimes. And I'm just like, just do it yourself. Like go outside, like figure it out. And so that's kind of my, mm-hmm. or be very, very careful Yeah, who you, we always make sure to say like, be very, very careful. I just don't trust anybody. So I'm. I know. Laura's like, don't talk to anyone. Like, talk don't, to the trees. And I'm like, no, take no, every no. class. Yeah, I know. And, it, and both are, both are great. <laughs> and they're both right. And like, both can happen yeah, at the same time. You just have to yeah. decide what feels good for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there's a lot, there's a lot there for you, my friend. There's a lot there for you. Especially if you want to offer things in the future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to take, probably take some classes. Yeah. Right? But honestly though, but if you want to offer something in the future, also you need to spend some time yeah. with nature and by yourself. Yeah. So you know what your own thing is. Oh, look at us just like, yeah. Agreeing with each other. I know, it's so cute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> True. Yeah. Can't help it when we're both right. We're smart. Um, <laughs> lots of the same <laughs> question about developing your psychic abilities and intuition. Sign up for my class, my friends. Yeah. It's too late. Enrollment closed. You were too slow, but that's okay. <laughs> we will be back next spring. Huh. Get on the wait list. Get on the um, wait list. Let's see. Uh, how does one come out as a witch from a different Emma? Uh, you just say it. You just do it. You don't have to come out if you don't want to. Yeah, you don't got to come out. Mom popped in my was don't come out if the you don't want to. The only thing that's important is that you know who you are. This has <laughs> also been in my head a lot is that coming out as a witch doesn't make you a better witch. Staying in the broom closet as a witch doesn't make you a worse witch or mm-hmm. a better witch. Like none of these things are exclusive unless you want to make it your business, mm-hmm. which is something we will get into in the business of witchcraft episode. Mm-hmm. It I doesn't agree. matter. I don't care. Like if, if ugh, I just don't, there are so many talented witches that we don't even know about. I know. I love secret witches. We don't even know yeah. how, how knowledgeable and powerful they are. And we maybe never will. Mm-hmm. And I love that shit. Yeah. Just like there's so many talented people that will never be famous. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like it's just like talent and 
is everywhere and like just because you have a million followers or whatever yeah. doesn't make you i don't believe it makes you more legitimate because no. you have more attention it maybe makes you have be like a professional about you might it have more opportunities yeah and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that at all but like uh, but if we're talking about magic and witchcraft in itself mm-hmm which is not a business in itself. It, the, the business is a layer on top of your practice. Mm-hmm. That's an extension. If that's something, if that's something you want to do, mm-hmm. that doesn't, it's already full without that shit. Absolutely. In my opinion, it's already full and matured and it can be yours. And that's, that's that. Mm-hmm. That's, so I think, yeah. Like, that's my opinion. If, if coming out is important to you, like, who are you coming out to? Yeah. Like your friends, your family, Insta. okay. Um, Whatever. Or is it just you that you need to come out to? And that's, yeah. that's fine too. But I, like Laura said, and it's the same with like queerness and transness too. Being in the closet doesn't make you any less queer. Mm-hmm. Being in the broom closet doesn't make you any less magical. Being out doesn't make you any more magical. Um, you are who you are no matter what. Yeah. No matter what side of the closet door you're on. Yeah. And that's what really matters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, ooh, another one of these. Sunkiss Brunette. How do you handle a judgmental partner when getting hold of your practice? I am the wrong person to ask this question of because I am of the dump him persuasion. <laughs> I kind of am too. Dump him, dump them. I'm assuming it's a man just based on the question, which yeah. is wrong of me. But it's okay. <laughs> you can literally like conjure better. So <laughs> yeah, honestly, I wouldn't fuck with anyone that wasn't like support, at least supportive. I don't want to hide myself. It's okay you if they're not into to. like they don't have to do it with you if that's not for them. But if they're giving you shit about they it. They shouldn't make you feel bad. Exactly. It's not. Right? Pull a card about it. Pull a card about it. See what they say. Book the tower. <laughs> the devil. The devil. <laughs> Nine of swords. The devil. <laughs> Changes are coming. <laughs> okay. Uh, Temperance. Thoughts on all this 100D, 500D wealth ascension. What I'm not that on that side of the mean? internet. But anything ascension based. Wait, I'm like what? 5D. Here, let's Google it. Oh, is that? Oh, let's Google. Yes, we're going to live Google this. Wait, 100D? I've heard of like 5D Ascension, which is just, we talked about this in a previous episode, but it's just the rapture. It's the rapture. Oh, yeah, it's the rapture. Repackaged. I don't know what this is, which which makes me kind of happy. Is your screen still on your phone or is it cracked? It's the screen protector that's cracked. I I was like... I'm too lazy to change it. No, no. It's good. <laughs> I just thought it was your actual phone. No. I, like, oh. I, I don't know. I'm finding like camera equipment when I Google. It. Yeah, I was like, is this a film type? Maybe of it's film? like a TikTok thing. I don't know. Maybe? But I know that like, let's look on TikTok. Let's see. Where's my phone? Oh, 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 oh. Okay. I'm going to search Fine. it. Okay, hold on, let me see. What is spiritual <laughs> also, ascension? Like, when I think of ascension, it's I think like of Christ. Spir- oh, okay, here we go. Yeah, me too. This is like a spiritual awakening, um, like inner rebirth, upgraded, elevating yourself. Um, but like there's levels, like a it's like an MLM scheme. It's or like an MLM. Like, it's a Ponzi scheme. What the Throw fuck? it in the trash. What? Okay, five <laughs> types of spiritual ascension. Awakening of the mind. Okay. Awakening of a new personality. Okay. Awakening of spiritual energy. Okay. Awakening of the soul. Okay. All things that don't sound terrible. Number five, total awakening. Enlightenment. You've reached the stage of... This sounds like some really pseudo-Buddhism weird... Yeah, I don't trust it. I would pass on it. I don't like it. I don't like anything that there's like a goal... Like I said, that's not like spiritually, like culturally, ancestrally founded, where there's like a goal like that, where it's like you have to be this level. To like leave it's very pedestally. Yeah, I don't like that. And I don't really, I'm not into that shit. And like who gets to be, who, who decides? decides? Yeah. yeah. The, teal the swan? person on the teal swan, so. the person on the pedestal. <laughs> Pass. 
Hard pass. I just would, I would skip it. <laughs> um, thoughts on, this is from Annalise. Thoughts on getting deities gods tattooed, like Demeter or the birth of Venus? Hello. It's me. Um, Hello, darkness. I don't think there's anything friend. wrong with it. If you have connection to it and... Just make sure you're sure, my Just friend. make sure you're sure. Because, uh, yeah. <laughs> Just make sure you're sure that's the spirit for you is all I have to say about that. Yeah. When yeah. it comes to, like, deities and when it comes to, like, tarot cards. I know somebody who got the tarot, uh, the tower tattooed on them. And okay. I was like, why would you do that? Whole life a mess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you want to be sh- real mess. sure. Just, like, be sure. Yeah. yeah. But I guess that's true of any tattoo, right? Just be sure. Yeah. But, like, me getting SpongeBob on my ass is not the same as me picking, like, the wrong deity and it fucking my life For up, right? Sure. Like- <laughs> yeah. Like, make, just make sure you're sure that that's your, that's your jam. Yeah. You but know? I think it could be, like, a beautiful devotional practice if you really do have relationships. I have several. <laughs> With that spirit, yeah. It's all Artemis or that. And like, yeah. I don't have any. I guess I have a tarot card. I have an Artemis. I have the And then I'm planning on doing like a, a Venus-y situation. That's cool. Yeah. You should. I like I that. I already have that. Yeah, I mean, it just, I. it depends, I guess. It could be an homage and not yeah. like. A tribute. Yeah. Just yeah. make sure not you're a, sure. <laughs> or it's not like a culty situation, like a, not an a culty, that's fine. A culty situation um, where you're branding yourself and shit. That's yeah, weird. like Nexium. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't join cults. <laughs> don't join cults. <laughs> ah! Yeah. Um, and just like, it's, it's a, spirit that you have relationship with yeah. like don't just do it because you think their imagery looks cool no. like pick a spirit who you really do have connection and genuine relationship to because it's like an extension of devotion mm-hmm. i think yes i agree it's yes. not just oh look at this like it's like mm-hmm. like a deep connection it's a commitment yeah. yeah and a commitment to and the things i got tattooed like I've connected with since I was a child. So it's been a very long time of me like clearly seeing and being spoken to mm-hmm. by this like energy. Yeah. So like, I don't know. Makes sense. Yeah. 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 But if it's not your thing, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. It's just, I like think of those people who put up altars to like random spirits just because they think it looks cool, but the spirit doesn't actually want them. And then like, yeah. it gets chaotic. Yeah. It's really easy to take an altar down. I'm trying to think of it. Guess what's done not that easy? Getting a tattoo. Yeah, try covering, covering your Kali <laughs> tattoo. Like, let's not do that. <laughs> Just don't do it. You know what I mean? Like, your Athena tattoo um. or whatever. <laughs> your Bridget tattoo. Like, yeah. Just make sure you're sure. <laughs> make sure you're sure. Make for. sure you're sure. sure. Well, that's all we got for today. That's all we got for today. That was nice. That was plenty. TBH, do I have any spirit candy? Nah. Oh, the spirit candy's been lacking a little bit. I know. It's because we've been tired. I've been busy. (laughs) That's exactly it. I'm putting all my, like, that into, like, my fucking oracle deck right Mm -hmm. now. So, Okay. Those are great questions. Thank you so much. We love answering your questions. Mm -hmm. I think it's fun. Yes. Um, So keep sending them, please. Drop your questions in the comments on YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, we would love to see them there. I personally like to log in and reply to everybody's questions on YouTube. Right. Fun for me. I don't. I don't like it. So I don't do it. (laughs) I can't handle it. I just report back on like the general (laughs) temperament of the comments. The Christians are mad. I'm always like, who's mad? Is it the Christians or the other witches? The Christians. It's okay, the Christians. Fuck. They get real mad. They're like, yeah, oh, look at these like whores for Satan on here. <laughs> Thanks, Enjoy sir. burning in hell. <laughs> I will. Thanks for listening to Third Eye Bind. Be sure to leave us a message on the Third Eye Line. See you in hell. See you in hell, bitches and witches. (laughs) Bye. Bye. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening. You can follow the podcast at Third Eye Bind Pod on Instagram. There, submit your questions via the Third Eye line by sending us a voice message or text DM. 
The show is available wherever you listen to podcasts and for you to watch on YouTube. Get early access to episodes and even monthly one-on-one sessions with us by joining our Patreon. Find us at patreon.com slash third eye bind. Third Eye Bind is produced and edited by Mike Realm. Hosted by Caitlin Grania and Laura Wong. Music by Mike Realm. Set design by Laura Wong. You can find Laura on Instagram at Lady Moon Co. And you can find Caitlin at caitlin.grania.